Here we are at Strictly Medicinal Seeds, the original land for our seed company. And this is Williams, Oregon on November 4th in the year 2020. We're speaking about making cuttings of rosemary plants. And we're going to start out by creating a willow broom to make some willow water for uh, setting our cuttings to increase their uh, growth rate and uh, to help them root out better. So the willow tree is a weeping willow. This is, uh, the Latin is Salix Babylonica. You can think of it as like the the gardens of Babylon, where, which are which are cascading down over over the uh, terraces of old. The tree origin originated in China and has been introduced worldwide. The particular tree that we're under right here was planted by me some 10 or 15 years ago and was uh, part of a uh, uh, an old old tree a grandfather tree that was growing on the Iowa River that I remembered from my childhood so I took cuttings of that and rooted the cuttings and planted the tree here so this is a little bit of that grandfather willow tree that uh, was a was a part of my childhood and still resides there uh, broken branched and hollow cord as it is uh, the ducks still congregate under it and when you approach they break and go into the into the iowa river and swim around so um, uh, willow trees are uh, uh, very, very magical, and that is, uh, they are used in uh, magic and in uh, um, um, sort of uh, traditional medicine in various ways. Uh, uh, let me think if I can think of one of the uh, incantations. Uh, uh, the willow, the willow broom, is used for uh, purification. And so one of the old incantations is uh, um, sweep, sweep, sweep the floor, sweep the bad vibes out the door. And, and then also uh, the, the uh, witch's broom is uh, used for, for uh, flying in a uh, sort of an ethereal sense, uh, flying mentally or with the spirit. And so, so freeing the mind so that uh, we're uh, not encumbered by our by our bodies. So let's let's uh, think of this in terms of science because the 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 interaction between mysticism and science is uh, um, very very powerfully. Uh, coordinated synergy. The the tree contains uh, salicylic acid in the cambium of the of the uh, of the bark, and the salicylic acid is an uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, kills pain. So uh, um, it's very common to make a tea of the uh, dormant wood of the willow tree uh, as a uh, herbal aspirin, if you will. Then uh, the salicylic acid extracts easily with uh, boiling water. So you just uh, collect the bark when it's slippy, usually in the spring, uh, dry it, and then make a standard tea and, and that can be used for your uh, 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 anti-inflammatory and anti-pain uh, herbal medicine. But there's also another constituent in the tree, which is the uh, IBA, the, the 
uh, auxin type um, uh, hormone, which is uh, isobutyric acid, IBA. Um, and that is something which basically speeds cell regeneration. It speeds growth. So that is the uh, um, characteristic that we're seeking today uh, in making a willow broom so that we can whip the water and create willow tea. This is a uh, particularly non-violent method of working with the uh, willow in that um, uh, we don't have to, uh, as other as other uh, uh, recommendations have come, smashing the smashing the plant, uh, pouring boiling water on it. As actually, IBA uh, degrades at boiling temperatures, and so we don't want to make a hot tea. Instead, we make a willow broom, and we, on an ongoing basis, gently over time, whip the water and in the bucket and uh, uh, the the auxins are slowly extracted and then um, uh, we soak the cuttings in the water can soak the cuttings overnight and then we plant the cuttings in sand and so all those things uh, uh, you should be able to see today so we'll start by addressing the grandfather willow tree Oh, Grandfather Willow, I know that it's getting cold and you're beginning to go to sleep and your leaves are yellowing and dropping, but wake up, wake up, help us out, help us out these, help us humans out a little bit here. We need you to send some medicine down to the tips of your branches in this direction. We uh, beg you to allow us to take a little bit of your body and we will use it for, for good things. In fact, not only will we extract the medicine from your limbs, but we will also root out the broom and replant it and move more and more willow trees out into the world. So I, I know that, uh, that you have the ability to find water deep within the, the ground. In fact, when we had a witcher come out on this land, uh, the witcher found that the, the most wa water underneath the ground was at the very place where you are planted. Whether it's because the human was smart enough to put you where the water is, or whether it was because you brought the water to that spot, I don't know, but it makes us be part of the same life. And therefore, when I help you, then you help me and together we can help others. That's the way it works. So here are your branches here that we'd like to use. Please send your medicine down to this spot. I know that you can move the medicine around because when deer come in to browse, you make more of the tannins come to that spot so that it won't be so tasty for them and they won't eat all of you up. So bring the energy down to this place and Om Shri. Om Shri. Om Shri. See how we keep our attention and intention in the medicine. That makes it stronger. Now, the auxins are going to be exuded by the branch into the water and the leaves are not necessary. Normally, the willow tea is made during dormancy. And we're a little prior to dormancy right now because of the timing for this 
video. And so what we're going to do is we're going to strip the leaves from the branches. And what that leaves us with is a bare branch that has these scales. Each bud has one scale. And that is the point where the uh, new leaves are gonna come out next year. So when we bind the branches together, and I've, I've actually already prepared some right here so that you don't have to stand and watch me while I strip the branches. We prepare the broom in this manner, bundle it together, and then use another piece of the willow to wrap around and make two half hitches, one that way, and then another this way to hold the broom together. And then it's a clean bucket and regular tap water. And this is placed in the sun in the greenhouse. And the broom is placed in it. And then every time I walk by, I agitate. And first I go to the right and create a vortex of creation. And then I go to the left and create a vortex of dissolution. So we have all of the cosmos right here inside this water. The making of life and the unmaking of life. And so then every time that this is mixed, we're aerating. I see here, here comes the science again. Then we're aerating the water and it's becoming more and more alive. Water is completely magic. It's H2O, two of the lightest uh, um, elements in, in our, uh, on our earth combine to make one of the heaviest elements on earth. If that's not magic, then what is? So this is uh, uh, actually agitated in such a way for uh, days, weeks. It can even go for months. And as we agitate, then the, the tea becomes stronger and stronger. And because we're aerating it, then it doesn't, it doesn't go bad. And uh, eventually the, the broom sprouts. And then after the broom sprouts, it's just oozing these hormones out into the water. And the water gets richer and richer the broom gets more and more full of roots Amazing. and, and then um, we can plant the, plant the willow and make the trees and we can soak our cuttings in the willow water. We're out here on the Rosemary Row. This is the upright Rosemary, Rosemarinus officinalis which is a, a great herb uh, from the Mediterranean basin, which uh, uh, is wonderful for uh, using in a culinary context. The, uh, the value of antioxidant herbs of this nature in cooking is that they um, counteract the negative aspect of uh, oils and fats that can cause a, a, a lot of a lot of uh, disease and so if you use antioxidant herbs in your cooking on an ongoing basis daily then the likelihood that you will get cancer is much reduced also they taste really good and the smell reminds you of remembering it reminds you to remember remember the past remember to be in the moment it spurs 
memory. Contains rosmarinic acid now, doesn't it? And rosmarinic acid is an anxiolytic. It's a, it's a uh, anti-anxiety compound, which helps you keep a positive view in this very challenging world that we live in. Helps calm you so that you can think. And so we like to propagate rosemary and rosemary does make seeds, but the seeds are generally empty testa. So you get maybe 2% germination from rosemary seed. And uh, I find that anything that makes seeds that are generally a very low germination rate uh, have other ways to propagate themselves besides seeds because they're not relying on seeds primarily to spread themselves and and plants uh, in general want to spread themselves procreate cover more and uh, they live in communities and communities are composed of <laughs> children that grow into adults so in this case the plant does well uh, in two other ways uh, uh, one is uh, uh, as a cutting which is really what we're talking about uh, doing today is making woody cuttings from rosemary and the other is by layering which is where a, a lower stem uh, comes into contact with the dirt and throws roots and then uh, can be removed from the main plant and uh, transplanted uh, uh, elsewhere. So those are the two main ways that rosemary is, is propagated besides uh, attempting to go with the seeds. And let, let's make a, a cutting here. This will be uh, made from the plant, dropped into the willow water, and then planted in the greenhouse in the sand bed. Uh, uh, you plant it in the fall and dig it up in the, in the spring. And by then it should have thrown roots if everything goes as planned. So I'm looking here at the plant and I'm seeing uh, where the uh, uh, prune occurred last year. This was, this was cut it at this spot last year. And so at that point of, of, uh, of pruning, there are several branches forming. And the way to make a good cutting is uh, to make a heel cutting. You don't just cut off the plant like that. You peel back the plant in this manner. And that gives you a heel. You can see this is known as a heel right here. And it is uh, at this margin right here where the new roots are going to form. So this gives more, here comes the science again. Here, this gives more surface area. It gives more surface area for the uh, roots to come out. And then you want to remove any green uh, portion that would be under the, under the sand. That's going to be against the, um, uh, against the regrowth. And then you use two nodes for, for aerial growth. So here we have our two nodes. We have our, our uh, heel cutting. And then what I like to do is, this is all going to be underneath the sand here so I can strip a little bit there and there. Now, I don't want to strip off all of the bark, but I make a couple of uh, uh, striations running down and then more roots will form from, from, uh, those, from those wounds. So that's, and then we don't want it to dry out. So as soon as we've got it done, we drop it into the willow water and then we go for another one. See how this is done, it can be done quite quickly. Two nodes, strip, strip, remove those bits of bark and done. And then go to a new place, find another one. So you note how we're using young wood. Okay, the heel on this one is a little bit long, so I'm gonna cut that off. There's my two nodes, strip, strip, done. There's another good one right here. Heel's a little bit long. 
strip. Uh, I don't really like this node too much, so I'm going to remove that. There we go. Strip, strip. Remove those bits of bark. Done. Spend hours out here making rosemary cuttings and remembering bits of things from my past. When it's a negative memory, then I drop it. And when it's a positive memory, then I might follow it out for a little while and then drop it. When I find that my mind is going in negative directions, then I can use the broom and I can sweep, sweep, sweep the mind. Clean it. It's up to me. I can follow negative thoughts or I can have positive aspirations. Just like any time working with the medicine, look at your motivation and make a little prayer and say, may this rosemary plant bring happiness to someone. May it bring healing. May it prevent cancer. May it remind someone of something good that happened in their life. See, this is too old of wood here that came off but now there's a younger stem coming off so I can just peel it back and there's my heel cutting again perfect you want to make them nice and long so that you can bury it in the sand pretty deeply as above so below right now the balance is mostly aerial because there are no roots here so we want to make sure that there's not too much on the top because basically the plant needs to support those aerial parts and if it's too big a job without any roots with just the interaction between the sand, the moisture, and the bark then the cutting would die. So only two nodes on top, plenty of room to bury the cutting and into the hormonal tea. Keep it moist. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick up these extra pieces that fell because this is medicine and there's really no reason to waste it. And this I'll bundle and dry and then we'll put that in our cooking. Thank you rosemary plants. You've done well. I promise to bring you to more people and to keep the medicine rolling on. So here we are next to the greenhouse where we're going to be making the uh, plantings. And I was reminded that there's another kind of rosemary that's really pretty awesome. Uh, it has a little more camphor in it than the upright type. It is the creeping rosemary, uh, Rosmarinus prostratus. And this one is in flower right now. So we're going to make a few cuttings off of the creeping rosemary also, just to uh, kind of mix things up a little bit. And again, I'm seeing a spot here that where it was uh, truncated last year, and there are some nice pieces growing out. I was able to peel this back. These are usually uh, a little bit uh, wimpier cuttings than your officinalis, the, the upright type. There's your heel. There are your two nodes. And let's get another one here. That's really thin wood, but it's going to work. And here's a piece that's a little thicker wood. There are your two nodes there. A nice long shank. All right, good. Now let's take these in. And 
here we're going to keep the uh, creeping rosemary separate from the upright rosemary. So this here is a sand bed and I call it a double bubble because we're inside the greenhouse which is one bubble and then there's another plastic bubble that I can pull over to uh, protect the cuttings and to keep the moisture level up so that uh, uh, we don't have to rely too much on roots that don't exist in order to keep the aerial portions of the cutting alive. So this double bubble concept with the coarse sharp sand, uh, deep, uh, deep bed of coarse sharp sand is very useful for making uh, woody cuttings or uh, semi-woody cuttings as we are with the rosemary. It's kind of like a semi-woody cutting. Uh, a traditional woody cutting would be something like uh, a uh, elderberry would be a, a very woody cutting. In any case, uh, here's an area last year where I planted the creeping rosemary and there's for some reason one of the cuttings was not dug up and so uh, what I'd like to do is actually dig that up and show you what the uh, root development is like in a year's time. Uh, one of the reasons why this was missed probably was because the bed got weeded up and so the weeds uh, um, get in the way and you can't necessarily see exactly what you've got. So I just wanted to, to mention that uh, something like this has got to be like upkept on an ongoing basis and so you want to plan for weed uh, weeds coming up and a way to uh, uh, weed the rows as it were so so what we do is we plant the cuttings in rows and then as the weeds emerge we can remove them by just running our hands up and down along the row cultivating as it were so here's a here's a this is a dibble and we stick it right down into the into the deep sand which has been nicely moistened and I've got three cuttings here so I'll make three holes one two three all in a line a couple inches apart and then I'll plant my cuttings that I just made like that. This one fell down in a little bit far so I'm going to lift it a bit and then push the sand into the side and firm around to make sure that there is no air in association with the cuttings, with the, with the uh, stem of the cuttings. And see how happy they are? One, two, three, all in a row like that. Then you can take a little willow water and dribble that on there. And you can whisper a prayer, whatever, whatever comes from your heart. I use the sacred syllable, the seed syllable, OM, very effectively. Uh, OM. creates a vibration of life. So here we have our row of the prostrate rosemary. And I think I had some tags in here. Sometimes you're lucky and it actually says what, what it is, but not this time. So this is the creeping So we're going to tag this with an indelible tag in the front and that way we know what it is later on. And now we're going to make another row and this is going to be for the uprights. So that should be enough. These are the upright cuttings that we did out in the field. They've been soaked in the willow water. Um, 
And as chance would have it, I did make exactly the right number of rows for how many cuttings there were. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, lucky eight. The Chinese love the number eight. They think that's the luckiest number there is. Of course, us Westerners would like a seven, wouldn't we? A seven or an 11, perhaps. But we must be vibing with the Eastern vibes. Okay, so I've compressed. This is, this pressure is uh, a, a, a poorly understood concept. Many, many people will plant seeds without tamping afterwards. And the th seeds have no sense of place and the seeds don't germinate. Same thing with the cuttings. If you just stuck them in there and left air around the cutting, then it wouldn't throw roots. So you need to tamp. Remember to tamp. Okay. So there's our upright rosemary and we need to label that, don't we? See what we've got here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one's upright. Can't sufficiently stress the value of labeling your plantings. You think you're going to remember what it is and you know you won't. So here's the last little bit. We're coming in here on this creeping rosemary. Well, looks like there might be two of them there. Uh, this creeping rosemary Actually, I am able to identify it by the leaf shape. And when you, in the spring, when you're all done and you want to dig these up and, and pot them into gallons, uh, then the way to approach it is to come in from the side. You don't just pull up on the plant. You come in from the side and you dig down. All right, like that. And then you come in underneath it, see? And then that means that you don't disturb it. You don't disturb those roots. You don't want you don't want to lose the roots that you finally created. So here's this little wimpy cutting that got missed last year. Let's wash it off a little bit. And it's just thrown a couple of little roots. This is right here. This is coir. Uh, coir is so useful. Uh, you can you can get. A coir product, which is a, a coconut uh, exocarp, ground up, leached, and it is very useful horticulturally. You can hold hold cuttings in that until such time as you're ready to pot them up. Now, here's the one that I was really after. This was the big one that's made quite a bit of aerial growth, and to me, uh, you know, because there's this balance between the above ground portions and the and the below ground portions of plants this tells me that there's probably quite a bit of root growth occurring and i can see i can see the roots already coming out of the side of my excavation right there so that's a good sign then i'm coming in underneath it and i'm bringing it up and there we go Let's dip this. So look carefully and you can see that that's my uh, heel cutting that I made originally last year. And then you can see these other roots coming out here. Those are coming out from the striations that I created and you're having good quality roots coming out from the heel, from the tip of the heel and from all around that uh, tissue that um, uh, came from the mother plant. So as above, so below, I've disturbed the bottom of the plant and I'm going to replant. And so I want to cut back before I replant because that more consistently balances this plant. We have this much root, we have this much aerial, we're going to plant it in a pot 
eventually, not right now. I'm gonna plant it in a pot and then it will be so happy because it is balanced. The yin and the yang of propagation. So right now let's just lay it, layer it in coir and uh, it'll hang that way for, for some time uh, until we get around to potting it up. There was a little bit of disturbance in there on our new planting, but we can fix that. There's a weed right there. We can get rid of that. Tamp, tamp. Water. Boom. Okay. Um, just real quickly to kind of wrap things up here. Um, the role of chance in gardening uh, should not be dismissed. There's so much going on that we don't really notice. And there are so many unanswered questions. Like here, I planted five Thai volcanoes and one of them inexplicably dropped its leaves and then grew new leaves. Why did that happen? How can I know? Or here, a myrrh plant got overly wet and died, and then a little Ossimum Africanum uh, temperate Tulsi volunteered right in the middle of the pot. Now, why did it do that? Or here, Here's a uh, bursar of phagoroides, one of the, one of the uh, 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 aromatic uh, myrrh-like plants from uh, the New World. And I had it in this pot for, well, since 317 of uh, 2019. That's what my little tag tells me. But suddenly, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight again. Seems like the number eight is, is running with us today. Eight volunteer tomato plants in it. Why did that happen? How did that happen? It's part of the great mystery. <laughs>